Today's lesson is going to be about unsung heroes of the civil rights movement. And the overall goal of this lesson is to learn about some of the lesser known people of the civil rights movement, because it's important to know that no change is ever made in society by just a few figureheads, but that it's by huge swaths of people, smaller leaders that are paving the way for change in society. So it's that, but it's also learning to research these incredible and relevant sources. So I'm going to give you some feedback on how to do that today. Um, first, I want to share some of the posters that were submitted. I had hoped that we would be sitting around in a circle in class sharing these together, but since that's not possible, I want to share some of what uh, you submitted. So this is one that I think uh, just immediately caught my eye as soon as I opened my Google Drive folder full of the submissions, this one immediately caught my eye. I think it is the background that you immediately recognize the flag as well as the fact that they've taken these symbols and used them in a different way like this, the bird soaring as well as the fact that the lettering is really bold and easy to see from far away. So fantastic job. Uh, this is one that also caught my eye a little bit simpler but also really catches your eye. You have the multicolor brain going on there, the bold lettering, all caps. And then here's one that was made via, I think, Google Drawings or some sort of online format. I just wanted to show you that, yes, you absolutely can combine images to do that. The few words popping out, you know, there is really interesting too. The, the use of, you know, specific words, save it before it's too late, popping out just shows that you can use color to do the same thing that you would do with tone if you were speaking it. Just a side note commentary, one thing that um, we were commenting on in my family is that one of the uh, ironies of this terrible crisis is that they are showing that pollution is being reduced, that people's carbon footprints are re reduced by the um, quarantining. So that's an interesting point there. This is another one that really stood out to me, popped right away. I can see with my eyes, you know, and that's one where when you're creating protest art, you really have to think about what is going to catch people's eye like immediately from a far distance because that's often what it is. The combination of the flags and just, you know, making the point that it's about education. I maybe would have done slightly lighter colors um, just to make the lettering pop out more, but uh, yeah, very clear lettering, use of the combination of flags, uh, it definitely gets attention and the point is quite clear. Here's a couple more that were done using Google Drawings. Uh, actually, I think the one on the left was done using uh, Apple's Pages and the one on the right was done using Google Drawings. So the one on the right, the There Is No Planet B, that one, you know, people have made that flyer before, but the student who created this one you know, decided to take the planets and use one of the planets as an O and really go with contrasting colors and things like that. I thought this was very nicely done. Um, and then the various colors on the left too, as well as the symbols, we acknowledge, you know, the female bathroom symbol and, and whatnot and uh, the use of just a very simple color palette, red and black and white, um, definitely work. So I would say for the one on the left, the only change that I would make is you could probably cut out the truth is um, and have the same message, but maybe a little bit simpler. So now let's talk about research and what you're being expected to do today for the lesson today about research. This research analysis tool is something you've used before. We used this last semester when we were looking at researching people from the American Revolution and people that you didn't necessarily know that much about from that. So the idea is that this is getting you started on the research process like you would need to use when writing a research paper. The first thing that you do is you search for information and you take notes. So the notes go here in the observe section. And then you reflect upon those notes. And then you add some questions that would lead to further research you put your citation right here and your citation should be in MLA format. And then if you go ahead and look up those questions, you could put some of the information here or just write numbers of additional questions there as well. So what will you be graded on? You will be graded on if you were able to find a credible and relevant source. At the end of this slideshow, I'm going to include a video 
that explains what it is to find a credible source. And I think that that is very important, even especially given this time when it, you're being guided to use the internet more than ever. Um, but let's talk about what I mean by relevant. Relevant means that it relates specifically to the topic at hand. So if you're looking up a name of somebody and you find a person who's a NASCAR driver and you can't find anything about civil rights, but you're just like, all right, well, so he's a NASCAR driver and you put the information down, you've probably found somebody with the same name that was not the person that we were looking for. So make sure that you know when you're searching that you're searching for a person with that name who is also a civil rights leader or has something to do with civil rights and that your sources are trustworthy. In addition, we're going to be looking at in that observe column, did you take good notes that would help you if you were writing a research paper? So think about when you're writing an essay and you're being asked to use source information in an essay, are you writing down very specific things? So some of what I'm finding that is a problem in the writing that I'm reading from you lately, for example, in your civic engagement assignments, you'll write things like, I learned what people's concerns are in the community. Well, that's not going to help you write a research paper. You'd have to write, people in this community are concerned about a lack of parking. They're concerned about having more recreational services for their children. They're concerned about safety on the streets when they walk at night. Those are the specific things. So make sure that your notes are very specific, that if you were to write a research paper, you could quote directly from your notes and not have to go back to the source and read the source again and again. In addition, you want to make sure that you reflect on those notes so that remember that when we're writing a research paper, we give us a fact from a source and then you comment on that fact. Topic sentence, evidence, commentary, commentary. We're not going to write a research paper right now, but I want you to be gathering the skills that you need to write that way. So in that reflect column, you want to put your opinion of these facts. Don't just say, I think this is good. No. If someone were to say at the city council meeting, we need to address the parking situation downtown, then you know you could say, instead of communities using less parking, many communities are looking at public transportation and other forms to reduce the amount of individual vehicles on the road. That would be something that you're shifting without just saying, well, I think this. Although I think in notes is not necessarily a problem, but we want to go towards really just taking it a little bit further, adding a level of a depth of thought, not just I agree or I disagree, but really thinking deeply about the comments that you're reading. So for example, if you're reading about a civil rights leader like, um, like uh, Sylvia Mendez, who you know attended the school as one of the first you know, children of Latino descent in California to ascend an, an integrated school. And, you know, your commentary could be on the impact that that has had, that California now has more Latino students than it does white students, and that that family's contribution and her bravery and willingness had a direct impact on the fact that this is a place that Latino families can feel safe for the most part. Um, in America today. And then finally, in that questions column, there should be some indication of what you would research next if you were writing a research paper about that person. So additional questions like, where did Sylvia Mendez go to college? What does she do now? Does she think that it was good for her to attend those schools? So those are the type of things that you could do more research on. Not what if questions. What if questions you can't really research because they're hypothetical. Um, not like, oh, if it were you, would you blah, blah, blah. No, they should be really specific things that if you were to go on the internet and do an additional search, you could find the information somehow. So I'm going to uh, post this video right here, writing videos for kids, how to evaluate sources for reliability in the comments so that you can go and view this video, which will help you understand what I'm looking for when I say reliable sources. Also, your reliable sources need to be uh, posted in MLA format. So let's talk a little bit about how to do that. So if I go right here and we'll edit this, I'll add some text right here. I'm going to add my notes here. 
So let's pick one of these civil rights leaders to look at. Password. Civil rights. Researching one unsung hero. Lesser known civil rights leaders. You're going to go and you're going to pick someone off this list. So I'm going to do Sylvia Mendez right now just because that's who I was already speaking about. But you're going to pick someone off this list. So I'll just start with like a simple Google search. Sylvia Mendez. And I'm not just going to put Sylvia Mendez because that's probably a pretty common name. So I'm going to type in Sylvia Mendez civil rights to make sure that I get the right Sylvia Mendez. Here's a Wikipedia. Is Wikipedia a credible and reliable source? Uh, no, it really isn't because anybody can edit it. See this button right here? Edit. So you could go down here though and look at some of these further reading and these external links, the OC register. These are a little bit better sources. Uh, I'm just going to go back and see if I can find anything on my original Google search. LA Times. Here we go. Mendez versus segregation 70 years later. Uh, IDRA Research Center. I wonder what the IDRA is. Let's check that out. The Intercultural Development Research Association. Sounds good. Let's see if I can find more information about who they are. So here's a podcast. I don't see... Oh, here we go. Here's an, an author. So part of what you're looking for is, are they attaching people's names? Yes, she's interviewed by Kristen Grayson, who has a Master's of Ed and is an IDRA Education Associate, and Bradley Scott, PhD. So there are some names there of credible experts in the field of education. I'm going to go down and see who publishes this. Children First, IDRA, who we are. That's a good way to figure out if a publishing organization is credible. Yeah, this is looking like a credible organization. So I'm going to trust this source. Let's go back and see what we have to say about Sylvia Mendez. This is episode 123 of IDRA Class Notes. We have to be aware of where we come from, what we have done, how people have always been there for them. They're in college because people have fought for them to be in college. Because the wrongs, the evil, have been faced by courageous people. And, and students, you're just as courageous as anybody else. And I'm expecting you to stand up to establish that. That is so and true. Change. I'm not a teacher. I'm not an educator. The only thing I can do is inspire them and uh, give them hope. Good afternoon, and thank you for listening. You're about to hear an interview between Kristen Grayson of the IDRA staff and Sylvia Mendez, who was an important participant in the Mendez versus Westminster case back in 1946. Uh, this case has an interesting history and an interesting connection to the Brown versus Board of Education. So I want you to understand, our listeners to understand, that this case was argued before the Appellate Court of Appeal in California, and a decision was rendered in 1946 to allow Mexican-American children to attend public schools of their choice without regard to their race. It was a precursor in that regard to the U.S. Supreme Court decision of Brown versus the Board of uh, Education in 1954. And what was important about it was that it did argue some of the same principles as were found in the Brown versus Board of Education case and many of the friendly participants to the Mendez uh, case were also critical players in the Brown versus Board of Education case, including Thurgood Marshall and Chief Justice Earl Warren, who was governor of California at the time that the decision was rendered. So we have this wonderful interview with uh, Ms. Mendez, who was in fact involved in the case, with uh, one of our IDRA staff members. And she has a chance, a real opportunity to explain what this case meant to her and her family, the implications of this case on their education, and her thoughts 
and her beliefs about what should be happening in public education in 2013 and beyond, given that we are finding many public schools resegregating and opportunities for kids, for learners of color, uh, being reduced or being challenged in many circles. So listen uh, to this wonderful interview and be informed and inspired by it. Hello, I'm Kristen Grayson with IDRA, the Intercultural Development Research Association, where our vision is to create schools that work for all children. And today I'm speaking with Sylvia Mendez from the famous Mendez Court Case in California that integrated schools for Mexican-American children. So Sylvia, tell me a little bit about what you remember about the going-ons at that time when you were just a child. I remember we were all playing in the admitting room and all of a sudden my aunt, who had taken us to school, states, we're going home. And when we arrived at home, my, my aunt told my dad what happened. He told her to calm down because she was very upset and said, I'll take care of this tomorrow. So he went to the school and he was told that Mexicans had to go to the Mexican school. He could not accept that, and he went to the school board, and he informed them that they did not have the right to separate us. But they told him, Mr. Mendez, they has been a decision here in Orange County where, where Westminster, Garden Grove, El Modena, and Santana have decided to have Mexican schools. So you children will have to go to the Mexican school. My father got really upset, and he was talking to this man. His name was Rivera. He told him, Listen, Gonzalo, I just found out about this lawyer that just fought a case in, in Los Angeles where in Riverside they wouldn't allow the, them to go into the public parks. His name is Marcus. And he fought that case, and, and now the Latinos can go into the public park they're in. So I went ahead and paused that because I'm doing the citation. So I was looking for a publisher for this, but it looks like the Intercultural Development Research Association is the publisher for this. So I'm just going to go ahead and put it twice, once as the title of the website and once as the publisher, Intercultural Development Research Association. You'll notice that I indented the second line and I'm going to indent the third line as well. You want just the little first part of the first line to stick out. And then I need a date for what that interview was on. Remember, it's always author, title, the bigger title, the publisher, and the date. So this was on May 20th, 2013. You do it in the format of day, month, year. 20 May 2013 and then because I'm looking at a website I am going to include the website as well underneath and I'm going to remove the hyperlink from that and I'm going to put it in black still no hyperlink and I'm going to delete the WWW. Good enough. So that's MLA format. Author, title, bigger title, publisher, date. And then if it's the internet, a link. So she said that her dad went to the school board and that then her dad got a lawyer who told her that, um, or somebody told her that a lawyer had helped integrate public parks. So he wanted to hire the same lawyer. I would say that you try to really fill this column. You should have a decent amount of notes here, anything you can get from that source, but to keep this video short so that it's easier to upload, I'm gonna move on. So for my reflection, I'm gonna add here some notes about that, that you know, her father, Sylvia's father, Sylvia Mendez's father was inspired by previous victories that a lawyer had been able to sue to integrate parks so he realized he could do the same which shows that people should be looking at one success for the implications 
and how it could change other areas of society. And then the next question that I would have, as it said also in there that, you know, what she thinks should be done. So I really would wonder what career did Sylvia Mendez end up in as an adult? And I could look that up. So that's something that's a good question because it is something researchable, not just a pie in the sky question. Like what if it hadn't have happened? What if it hadn't have worked? That wouldn't be a good question, but this is something that we could research. So I hope this helps you figure out what to do on this assignment. It shouldn't take you any more than two hours. Please don't spend more than that on it. If you have any questions, please email me. Don't worry if you do something that was not what I was looking for. I'll give you a chance to resubmit to get the full points. And I hope that you're doing well. Have a great day.